Hi everyone, this will be a direct video response to um, Scotty M's video which is called Supply and Demand. The thing is, actually I didn't really want to do a response because it's his claims are so fucking, sorry but really freaking ridiculous. This is laughable, how on earth can you argue with the laws of supply and demand? This is a bit like someone saying the laws of physics is ridiculous, that the laws of gravity can be argued with. I'm sorry, if you walk off a cliff you're going down the way, you can't argue with that. Just like you can't argue with the laws of supply and demand. The basic laws of supply and demand tell us that when prices goes up, demand goes down. When prices goes down, demand goes up. His very first claim is that uh, Mason or Steiner, whatever, Red Scare TV, um, thinks that, quote, as Scotty M says, um, all people are born into this world with some God-given rights to possession. Then he goes on and says um, nobody is going to do this for free, which is actually totally twisting around Mason's argument, my argument too, and also the argument of pretty much every communist. The thing is, with this argument, he implies that... In a communist society, everything is given to you for free. Uh, guess what, Scotty M? Nope. This is why you can't take your type seriously, because of the whole idea of communism itself is predicated on the idea of being moneyless. Therefore, there is no profit motive. The other part of the problem is the economic calculation problem. We'll touch upon that. But first of all, the profit motive. The fact today surrounding us we have the vast population demanding higher paid wages, including socialists themselves, demanding higher paid wages through the minimum wage, contradicts your fallacious idea of this moneyless economy. Who wants to work when there's no money to give them that incentive to work? Are you insinuating that for the work they do, that they are rewarded with gifts? The problem with this silly idea relates to the second problem, which is the economic calculation problem. The economic calculation problem relates to prices and what do prices tell the market? What purpose do prices serve? Prices are not an obstacle to getting what you want. Rather, what prices are are signals in the market to tell you valuable information of profits and losses. Without the information that prices give to you, you cannot allocate scarce resources to the market. This tells me you don't understand the basics of economics. Why? The reason the study of economics exists is a study of our place on this earth. How we can better improve our living standards whilst using the fewest resources as possible. But there's a bigger problem and that problem is scarcity. Resources are not infinite, they are finite. In other words, there is not enough resources to go around everyone. So the purpose of why the study of economics exists is to find the most efficient way possible as to how we can translate those natural resources into commodities and allocate to the market efficiently without causing waste. Meaning that we must economise which simply means finding the most efficient economic system possible to better improve living standards using the fewest resources as possible. This alone tells us you don't understand the purpose the study of economic serves us. So going back to prices, prices are signals to the market that allow us to allocate those scarce resources to the market efficiently. If you do not hold the information of the price mechanism, you can't allocate scarce resources efficiently. There's no possible way you can. This is why people who support mixed economies and socialism are literally clueless when it comes to economics because they don't understand that what price controls cause is a distortion of the price mechanism. Price controls destroy the valuable information of profits and losses. What does that mean? Well, what do profits and losses tell the market? Profits tells the market what to produce more of, where to allocate scarce resources, what to invest more in. 
losses tell the market what to stop producing more of, where to stop allocating scarce resources and what to stop investing in. In other words, the information that profits and losses tell us is valuable information to allocate those scarce resources to the market efficiently. Because if you don't have this available information, what you end up doing is misallocating resources. The misallocation of resources is all too common thanks to nationalisation of industry because government price controls through price ceilings and price floors destroys the available information of profits and losses and what ends up happening is the government ends up putting scarce resources into parts of the economy that were simply not required and neglecting where it is required. Also, government has no possible way of knowing the information of every single living human being's needs and wants. It doesn't know this information, nor does it know how much to produce of every single product out there on the market. Add to this problem, consumers' needs and wants change and vary, they fluctuate. Just because I want a bike now doesn't mean I'll want it six months from now. Government has no way of possibly knowing this information. Thus, this is the very reason why the NHS itself is inefficient and why thousands of cancer patients are neglected. Not only is government clueless with the costs, it is clueless where to allocate the scarce resources. Therefore, with a moneyless economy, how do you propose allocating scarce resources to every living being when you have no information of where to allocate scarce resources, what to produce more of and what to stop producing more of? You don't hold this information. That's the whole point of prices. They tell the market whether something is valuable or not. They also tell the market what is scarce and what is not destroy that information and you're destined for disaster.